All right, welcome to the channel and to Techniques in 10, a series where we take a look at the fundamentals of various painting techniques in 10 minutes or less. Today I want to show you a few interesting ways you can create lightning, energy, flow and movement within your power swords. All the paints you'll need will be listed below in the description, so let's get a timer and let's get into it. All right, so I'll split this up into two parts. The first, we're gonna do a dry brushed version of this. So starting with exhaust manifold and a medium dry brush from Artis Opus, we're going to create gradients on both sides of the blade, going from dark to light, that's bottom to top, and then uh, dark to light, top to bottom on the other side. So we have alternating bright points. Just makes it a wee bit more interesting and it creates that sort of true metallic look to the sword so we're just quickly dry brushing over both sides to create a bit of a gradient and then we'll be coming in and starting to build up our power sword effect so we're going to be starting off with some holder blue here and we're going to take a small dry brush this time um, i'm not using a dry palette this time because i'm not too worried about the amount of moisture in the brush or in the paint at this point and we're just going to create some circular motions at the tip of the power rod. So we just want to be focusing on creating circular patterns around the tip. And as you go further away from that point, you want to soften your strokes. Now we're taking some Amarth blue mixed with our Holger blue and we're going to almost stipple some of this on. So you can do multiple things with your dry brushes. You can stipple with them and you can dry brush. So we're gonna stipple in the, the focused point of the color on the tip of the rod and then create those soft circular patterns to ease out the transition. Adding some titanium white into your mix, you're just gonna focus on the tip of the power rod this time, just stippling in that bright point. Finally, we're just gonna grab a standard size zero artist opus here and we're just going to highlight up the, the shaft and the tip of the power rod. And that just creates a nice simple dry brushed version of a power sword. Now we're gonna do the full version where we start off from a base of exhaust manifold, just get a nice even coat over both sides of the sword here. Generally you only need one pass, but sometimes you need to do it with two, depending on how long you've had your metallics on the wet palette. So just quickly coat that, no bother. Next, we're gonna take some dark aluminum or dark aluminum, depending on where you're from. And we're gonna create the same gradient around the power rod. Uh, we're gonna have that area be darker. So we're gonna create our highlights towards the tip of the sword on that side, and then the opposite on the other. So again, we're creating that gradient from dark to light. So just feather that in, add in a couple of stipples, nice and easy. Next, we're gonna grab some Abaddon Black and we're gonna thin this down to a glaze consistency. We're gonna push that from about halfway down the sword or halfway up the sword uh, towards the darkest point. So anything that we do on the front, we gotta do on the back. Same again, just build this up over a number of passes. You'll see that the initial pass is very, very light. And then as we continue to build this gradient and cover slightly less area with each glaze, we start to create this transition from light into dark. And again, this gives you that true metallic look to your sword. Next, we're just gonna come in with some aluminum or aluminum, again from the Vallejo model or Vallejo metal color series. And we're just gonna add in some quick edge highlights here. So grab both sides of the blade and then do your best to hit that center line down the, uh, down the middle of the blade. Next, we're gonna come in with some holder blue. We're using this in a glaze consistency and we're pushing our color towards the tip of the power rod. This just gives you an initial sort of foundation from where you can build. And then we're gonna come in with the same glaze and we're gonna kind of stipple this on in a, in a mottled pattern. This creates some movement makes it a bit more dynamic, makes it a bit more exciting. But you can see I'm just sort of applying my brush to different areas, building up the color in different places, not really thinking too much about it, other than I want to focus my color around the tip of the power rod. Doing the same, mixing in some titanium white this time. 
The reason that we're not using Amarth Blue this time is I find it easier just to control with two colors than it is with uh, multiple colors. And we continue to sort of build this up using those uh, thin passes, creating this mottled dynamic movement effect within our blade. And you can see as I get progressively lighter with my color or increase the value of my color, I start to focus where I'm placing my dots to be closer to the tip of the power rod. So you can see that gradient going from the Holger Blue up into this light mix with the Titanium White. Again, anything that I've done on the front, I've done on the back as well. So we're just gonna grab a size zero once again and we're gonna start to create our lightning effect. Now, whenever I'm doing this, I think that less is more when it comes to doing these. We don't wanna be covering the entire blade with lightning just because it hides all of that uh, true metallic look that we built up earlier. Plus it just focuses the attention and makes one part of the blade a lot more interesting. So we start to create these bumpy, wavy lines um, going down towards the tip of the power rod and then we create almost a, a border around it as well. We wanna leave some differentiation between the edges of the tip of the power rod and where our lightning effect starts. Creates more contrast and creates more interest around the tip of the power rod. So again, I'm creating these bumpy lines. I'm shaking my brush as I do them. I'm sort of stippling it on, moving it up and down, just doing whatever it takes to create uh, uneven lines. You don't wanna create anything that's too soft, too smooth, because then it doesn't really look like lightning. And create these forks as well from your, um, your lightning as well, allow it to fork and branch out as it just creates more movement, makes it a bit more dynamic. And again, just doing the same thing on the back, creating some lightning patterns around the tip of the power rod as that's where it's all emanating from. And then as I move further and further away from the power rod, I am thinning my lines, making them a bit smaller, a bit less impactful, and probably a bit less opaque as well. So try to get creative with the shape of your lightning as well. Allow it to bend, move, overlap with itself, wrap around things, play around with it. There's really no right or wrong approach whenever you're creating the lightning. So have some fun, experiment, try some different things. But again, less is more. Keep it to like two, three at the most, kind of four branches coming away from the tip of your power rod and just focus on creating that nice distinction in your pattern. Now I'm just taking a quick glaze of Holger Blue and creating that separation between the, the power rod and where the lightning starts just makes everything more defined and more impactful. Also, whenever you've been doing this, be sure to highlight up the tip of the power rod as well. Make sure it's the same color as your lightning. But once you've got the gold in there, I think this looks really good. I think this adds a different take on some power rods, bringing in that dynamic movement, that mottled effect. It almost has this like pulsating energy look to it. Now, if you wanna do this with a different color, here's an example with some purple. Taking some Nagroth Knight, Emperor's Children, and titanium white. Essentially just doing the same process but mixing in a bit of Emperor's Children through my transition. Creating those gradients from Nagroth Knight up into a mix of Emperor's Children and titanium white. Again using that mottled glazing effect, applying those stipples and those dots to create that movement, that dynamic look to your power swords. Say you wanna do it with green, grab yourself some Rift Green, green skin flesh, Goblin Flesh and Titanium White once again. Obviously you can swap out these colors and I'll have them in the description below. But again, we're creating that gradient from the Rift Green up into the, I think it's Goblin Green or Goblin something green. Actually it's Goblin Flesh. But again, we're creating that gradient using that mottled, thinned, glazed sort of consistency because it gives you that transparency, it allows some colors to show through, it gives you a bit of a different, a bit of a different dynamic look to your power swords. And again, we're only creating a small amount of lightning forks that come off the tip of the power rod. 
If you want to do it with red, take some corn red, evil sun scarlet, Marduk yellow, or really any yellow will work, and titanium white. Again, build that gradient from your darkest color up into a mix of evil sun scarlet and your yellow. And then we come back in with our titanium white and we create our lightning pattern again, focusing on creating that kind of impression around the tip of the power rod as that's where all of it's coming from. Highlighting up the power rod and then creating some forks of lightning out from the center. Again, less is more. So hopefully this is something you can apply to your models and your armies. I think this is a really cool take on some power swords, offering a new, unique and dynamic look to your weapons. Hopefully you found that useful. If you have any comments, questions or suggestions for future videos, please drop them below in the comments. And if you want to take your painting to the next level, I have a Patreon that's focused around feedback and coaching. You also get access to exclusive guides and content. If you want to show me what you've been working on or what you've been using these videos for, please head over to the Discord and drop some pics into the whips or the completed project. I would love to see what you've been doing. Just want to say thank you again for watching and I'll catch you at the next one. All links can be found below in the description and don't forget to like and subscribe.